Okay, hello and welcome. My name is Margie Esteville, and I'll be the host for this TLC session. We are excited that you've joined us to hear this TLC session titled Bridging the Gap in Online Education with Video Feedback. Please welcome Dr. Michael Cooper and Matt Leverens as they show us how to bridge those gaps in online education with video feedback. Take it away. Thanks so much, Margie, uh, and thank you for everybody for joining us today. I know that uh, it's day three of TLC, so hopefully no, nobody's uh, TLC'd out at this point. Uh, it's been a great uh, conference and uh, we're happy to uh, present on day three at this time. Uh, we've noticed that there's a lot of uh, discussion about video feedback, so uh, hopefully we're not gonna be covering uh, familiar territory too much uh, with this presentation. Um, so, uh, as Margie said, I am uh, Michael Cooper. I'm a, a full-time faculty member in the, uh, the College of Liberal Arts. And just to give some background of how we started this particular pilot, and let me first give the disclaimer that I am no, by no means an expert with video feedback or uh, using videos in classrooms at all. In fact, 2018 was the first year that I started using this technology. And that, of course, coincided with our uh, move to LMS uh, Canvas. Uh, because Canvas does have a lot of great tools uh, for video feedback, as uh, Matthew and I are going to show you in this presentation. Um, so <clears throat> let me just share my screen here. Uh, the, the name of the presentation is Showing Faces, uh, Bridging the Gap in Online Ed with uh, Video Feedback. Uh, that's a familiar metaphor. The, the, the uh, bridge uh, and the communication between instructor and student and uh, the, the purpose of um, our using video feedback in the classroom was really to try to uh, communicate more closely with students to improve their experience of the class and um, hopefully you know um, improve our own experiences as instructors too um, so to begin uh, as I said, I am a member of the College of Liberal Arts. I'm also a member of the Student Success and Retention Committee. Uh, so with the pilot that we were doing in 2018, we had many pilots in the College of Liberal Arts uh, that uh, involved Canvas and how we can utilize certain features where, uh, therein to enhance the student experience. Uh, for me, I was gonna focus on video feedback within the uh, discussion board forums. Uh, because we have a great tool called SpeedGrader, <clears throat> and I'll show you how to access that if you don't know already, but I think most of you are probably using it already at Ashford. Uh, so this is the question I started off with at the beginning of the year. How can we best utilize tools in Canvas to improve the student learning experience? So I want everybody in this uh, session, if, if you have a pen and paper, that would help, or just in your mind, uh, answer these questions so that this session will be as helpful as it can be for you. Uh, what I did was uh, consider a class that I was currently teaching. At this moment, you'll see I'm teaching 318. That's a creative writing class in the English program. Uh, number two, uh, locate one assignment or area where students typically struggle within that course. So for me, uh, with uh, the uh, Crave Writing class, peer review threads, there are three of them, and they are really central to the uh, course learning outcomes. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the students are critiquing each other's work, but more so they're applying the concepts within the class and really learning them through those means in the peer review thread. Uh, so. What I wanted to do was, of course, use the speed grader uh, feature, the, the video feedback in particular, to improve what I saw as a problem area in teaching this class over the years. Students giving very superficial responses in the peer review threads. Uh, usually stuff like, you know, I really love this piece. I don't have too much else to say about it because it's so good. Uh, that's not what we want. Um, so. That was my intent, that was my purpose, and uh, I'll go ahead and give you a specific example of how I uh, implemented this in my own class. But first, to give a, a kind of broad um, overview of some of the uh, research that's going on on this topic. You know, students' reactions to video feedback, we've been hearing a lot of the presentations in TLC talking about this. In my research, uh, 2015 uh, publications, uh, Matheson says, you want to perform better since the teacher is putting so much effort into the feedback. The involvement is contagious. 
Uh, again, this is a student talking about how they react to having uh, video feedback. Another student, uh, when students believe a professor cares, they connect with the course materials more. So um, in general, with this particular study that I found in 2015, uh, the students responded by saying 25% with in-text feedback, just pure text. They felt connected uh, with their uh, instructor, the implication being the other three quarters of the class really didn't feel uh, that, um, that connected with the instructor as they were receiving that in-text feedback. <clears throat> On the other hand, you'll see, not surprisingly, sorry about that, the video feedback, 83% of the students really uh, responded to it in a way that they weren't responding when they were receiving just straightforward in-text feedback. So we know that uh, in general, it's going to be a good thing. Students are going to react uh, positively when they do receive that feedback through video. There's, there's no uh, major revolution here or there. Uh, instructor reactions, I think that we can kind of guess what those would be too. Uh, you know, 75%, of course, they, they positively change their approach, more self-reflective, positive, supportive. Uh, this is big for me. It's easier to convey emotions, empathy, and humor. Uh, it kind of humanizes us as instructors when we're uh, projecting ourselves through video. Again, think of that, uh, that metaphor of the gap and building a bridge. That's what we're doing with the video uh, feedback, essentially. And, uh, you know, the big critique is, for everybody, uh, it's going to be time, time efficiency. You know, how much is this going to cut into our teaching uh, contract times? Uh, I think uh, the associates, we, we uh, have 12 hours per week. Faculty that are full-time probably go way over that. I know I do. But, you know, it's still a, uh, a matter of concern. You know, we only have so many hours in the week and uh, providing feedback is something that's going to probably take the majority of our teaching time. Okay, so going back to uh, the questions that I asked everybody, hopefully you, you kind of figured out a class that you're teaching now or you're um, building and you, you figured out maybe a problem assignment and how you might improve uh, students' uh, responses to that assignment <clears throat> through Canvas features. So this is what we're looking at with Canvas. Uh, our switch to the LMS, which took place, what, a year and a half ago, uh, it, time is really flying. Of course, the big thing is we don't have instructor guidance anymore, so all of that content has moved to the announcement section. I think that that really has kind of um, built more, more and more text into the uh, class. You know, it, it's uh, an area where we're now missing uh, this possible way to communicate with students now that we no longer have that instructor guidance section. So we're, we're now having to rely more on announcements to provide our lectures. And I think that kind of problematizes the content that we're delivering uh, in text because students can only read so much, you know, before they get that text fatigue. Uh, and I think uh, using videos is one way to kind of circumvent that. Uh, so with all of these features that we're looking at in um, Canvas, you'll notice uh, they're all in text. You know, you, we're writing stuff and students are reading the stuff that we're, we're writing to them. But here I've um, highlighted SpeedGrader because it does have that great tool of enabling us to provide video feedback and connecting students through that video feature. So, okay, on to that next, the second point, uh, you know, Let's find a challenging, challenging assignment. That's what I did. As I said, it was the peer review thread. And this, this highlighted part is really where students struggle with the most. Uh, be sure to use specific examples from the piece to substantiate your critique. Remember that a critique includes constructive criticism and praise, but it should strive to balance both. Um, Yes, and uh, again, the students were giving very superficial responses in their constructive criticism, a lot of praise. And uh, another thing that I would suggest that you do is uh, when you're looking at giving very specific feedback through videos, it helps to uh, provide a little transparency, I would say. Uh, you know, you might allude to the fact that these are course learning objectives, weekly learning objectives, 
that are the goal of these assignments. You know, the more that students are aware of the weekly learning objectives, I think, uh, the better they are going to be doing on those assignments. And that's somewhere where you can kind of highlight uh, the, the weekly learning objectives and CLOs in your video feedback uh, to kind of give them more specific direction and how to improve their work. <clears throat> so let's see an example. Um, this is what I did in my class, and uh, this video was actually posted uh, just last week. So I picked a student who was having a, a hard time with a, uh, a discussion board prompt. Here's my class. And um, the student number three, as you'll see, uh, she was not getting full points as we want. Uh, and this is the video feedback that I, I gave her. And I do include some in-text feedback you'll see to um, kind of give more specific direction besides the uh, general rubric calculations. But uh, I think the, the, the feedback itself that I'm providing through uh, video is something that really enhances uh, the student experience. So let, let me just show this real quickly to give you an idea of what I do. This is Dr. Cooper. Thanks for your contributions to this week's peer review. Uh, I'm going to give you a very uh, specific pointer to, to improve your contributions to next week's peer review. Um, so in your initial response, I noticed that you said uh, you're talking about your classmate's poem, and you said the theme is pretty straightforward, being about Halloween costumes, and I think it is effective, but maybe just a few more descriptive words. But I'm really just picking for the sake of the assignment. I don't have any more suggestions. And um, I, I think that we can go ahead and deepen our constructive criticism a little. Um, try to uh, challenge yourself to find things that are, uh, you know, not necessarily problematic, but might be improved. You, know, you don't have to be harsh when you offer constructive criticism, but you know, maybe ask your classmates questions and. Um, you know, give very specific examples of where they might improve imagery, for instance. And you're well on your way to doing that in a participation post. I noticed that you, you wrote uh, the only suggestion would be using more imagery and descriptive words about the character's feelings and scenery. That's awesome. Give us more of that and um, to improve that uh, particular post even more, uh, you might have just given a couple of instances, specific instances in the poem where um, your classmate should have used more descriptive language and so on and so forth. So thanks again, Haley. Okay, so that, that was really the gist of uh, how I proceed with video feedback. And um, with that particular example, let me stop sharing this, I'm sorry about that. With that particular example, um, the student, I think she was able to identify something to improve for the next week. And uh, we're in that next week right, right now, as a matter of fact, and I'm seeing the improvement already. Um, so <clears throat> um, that's my spiel with the video feedback. Uh, I, I'm more than happy to answer questions or concerns. And I, I think that Matthew and I will uh, do that toward the end of the the presentation, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to my co-presenter, Matthew Leverance. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I'm Matthew Leverance. I'm a core faculty member in the College of Liberal Arts, and um, like Dr. Cooper, I, I'm on the uh, Student uh, Success and Retention Committee, and we were looking at video feedback, and this was something that I really spoke to me because I had been experimenting with it previously as part of just an overall pedagogical approach that, um, that I take to, uh, to teaching. So let me share my screen and get this thing going here. And apologize, I couldn't like make a PowerPoint without making a cover slide, if that makes any sense. So um, anyway, just to give you some context, I didn't just, uh, I use a lot of video feedback and my aim really, uh, you know, initially there's some, you know, excitement because it was new technology. So like a kid in a candy store, I wanted to try every facet of it, but it's really grounded in my overall pedagogical approach, which uh, seeks to utilize elements of critical pedagogy a la uh, Paulo Freire, Henri Giroux, um, uh, the great folks at the Frankfurt School and beyond, obviously, uh, with elements of Taoism and Buddhism to create an, a learning experience that is uh, mutually humanizing 
it's educational and, and self-empowering both for teacher and student. And it's sort of all about breaking down teacher-student dichotomy. And I think that really dovete dovetailed well with what we were doing here on the committee because it's all about bridging the gap. And so that's exactly what I'm going for in my own, uh, in my own research and in my own pedagogy, uh, authenticity and a sense of connection with, with the people that are out there, with those very real people. That's hard enough to get in a classroom, much less when you're separated by the distance of cyberspace. And so that's the theoretical framework in which this stuff um, that I uh, approached is contextualize. So I'd just like to show you today um, some introduction video replies that I make, an email video reply, some discussion video responses and responses from those uh, that student, and then uh, just um, uh, some tips on how you can utilize video feedback with Civitas, as well as just a little bit of data on how this has been working out for me so far. So without further ado, here is, um, you know, your, your introductory your introductory forum where your um, students are posting you're talking to them um here is my video i recorded a video i just said you know hi welcome and i hope that i can get this to work correctly hi jazz welcome i enjoyed your introduction can you guys hear that dr cooper can you okay So I make small talk and introduce myself. Um, one of the key things about my really my introductory feedback that I felt like pointing out comes right about uh, here. Anyway, I really look forward to working with you. And as we progress, please know the lines of communication are always open. No question too small. You can give me a call anytime. Shoot me a text, uh, email, whatever works best for you. But uh, you know, get hold of me anytime, day or night, weekday, weekend, it doesn't matter. If I miss it, I'll get right back to you but I'm here to help and I think this class has a lot to offer and I think you'll enjoy it. So have a great first week and let me know how I can help. Okay, so that's my standard thing that I say and I wanted to highlight that end point because that sort of ties into that, again, that um, critical pedagogical slash Eastern approach that I'm trying to utilize. And I know that a lot of instructors, especially adjunct faculty uh, who may or may not have um, British Point provided phone numbers, uh, might bristle at this, this thought that they are just going to be available all the time. And so to speak to that just a little bit, um, I think by analogy, um, I can, uh, to, to get to be candid, I, uh, I have social anxiety and I have medication for it. And so sometimes when I know that I'm going to go and be in a situation that I'm going to find socially anxious, um, I'll just take one of my pills with me and I won't necessarily use it. And just the fact that it's there with me is very, very reassuring. So by extension or by analogy, rather, I've taught, you know, several hundred students this year because all the classes that I worked in and that you're seeing here are English 125 and English 225. So they're typically pretty large start classes. And I have given that same spiel to every single one of those students. And over the course of the past year, I probably have actually only fielded phone calls or any sort of help like that for maybe, maybe a dozen or less. And um, so it's really about making a connection and just putting yourself out there and saying, hey, I'm a real person and I'm here to help and recognizing that everybody's on different schedules, et cetera. And so this is the student's response. You know, she says, thank you so much for responding. Uh, you gotta come to NYC, this and this and this. You're the first instructor to leave personalized videos in my two years here and I very much appreciate the push for connectivity and authenticity. Looking forward to learning more from you in this class. So that really shows me that by doing this, I, I'm, I'm getting her opened up and primed to learn some more stuff. Like, uh, she's engaged now and that's great. So here's uh, an example of, of what I do with video discussion. Unlike Dr. Cooper, I haven't been providing my video feedback via the speed grader. I provide it directly in the weeks themselves where we would normally post our, our discussion chat responses. And so this student, uh, she actually did really, really well, so I'm going to play some excerpts from this, but uh, there's not a lot of me giving her constructive criticism because she did a fantastic job. Uh, I will just point out that my typical feedback for discussions involves giving feedback on content and then formatting, and I usually address those two distinctly, and then I also extrapolate any lessons that I can from there that might be applicable towards later assignments as well, so that it's not just focused on that discussion, but maybe if, if it's possible, by extension, all discussions and assignments. So here's a little bit of what I typically might say. Hi, Tanji. Thanks for your post. Very well done. You addressed each aspect of this discussion in a really thorough and insightful way, and uh, I think you showed some um, great uh, proficient knowledge of the 
technical the technical advancements that made Finding Nemo possible, and I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it's, it's a great movie anyway, and uh, for all the reasons that you that you note here, um, it was um, it, for its time and even beyond when you revisit it. It's a, it's a very well done computer animated movie, and uh, as you know, the colors, the bright so, the filmmakers embracing technical limitations in the medium to tell the stories visually when dialogue is necessary. And, I'm talking about how she's bringing in authorities to talk about things. Comprehensively, but uh, overall, nicely done. If I were to offer any uh, formatting advice going forward, I don't know. Uh, that everything looks good. You italicize your movie titles and text citations look good. References look good. Um, don't forget a reference entry for Finding Nemo. That's your main text, and you're talking about it, but you don't have a reference entry for it. So it's always important to have a reference entry for that main text that you're actually discussing. Okay, and so that, that's me giving them advice and then reinforcement. And now here is what the student posted in the discussion board itself in response to my, uh, and to my post. So that's something that's visible to other students too. And side note, what I found is once you start posting in the discussion forums themselves, other students will watch those videos and glean some of that information that you may be directing towards one student, but is applicable to all the students. They'll seize on that and begin to sort of learn, uh, you know, through group think uh, a lot more effectively than I, I've noticed than using uh, text. Uh, so she says, uh, you know, thank you as always for your response. I have learned so much throughout this course. This was week five. And I am sure to use the knowledge I have gained in my future courses in professional life. Wow. I mean, as a teacher, be still my heart. Uh, <laughs> being able to critique a film in the ways we have done in this course was fun and insightful. I have come to love and appreciate some films that I may never think to watch had I not taken this course. You did a great job with your feedbacks. I enjoyed all the video response I received. To be able to put a face to a name and receive such warmth gave me a calm feeling while listening. I enjoyed the sound of your baby girl in one of my videos. It brought a smile to my face. I am looking forward to what the future brings and how I analyze future movies that I watch. Thanks again. So for me, that was an incredibly potent piece of feedback. Not only, I mean, it was public for one, and she's basically saying, your approach made me, like, made this learning experience more effective for me, and it was more satisfying, and I liked it. I liked it. And so it's like everything that I could want in response. And um, I will point out too, just side, another side note. Uh, I do usually provide um, textual responses within SpeedGrader too, and they're typically sort of templated and then individually customized for the student by name and by issue. So I usually, I, I'll do that for all students. Um, and then I usually post somewhere between uh, you know, seven to eight in, in a, a discussion posts in a, in a given forum. So, okay, switching gears a little bit, I wanted to show those of you who may be interested in how you can leverage video messaging into Civitas. I'm just gonna check the chat room real quick in case somebody's trying to talk to me. No? Don't let the camera watch this video. Okay, sorry, Never mind. I'm getting off track. <laughs> okay, how to leverage video feedback into Civitas. All right, I, after a lot of playing around, I discovered that you can send yourself a video message through the Canvas email system. And you, you can also email any student with a video message, and I do that a lot. Um, but you can send yourself a video message through the Canvas email system via the recording function right here. So, uh, for example, I have made a week five video for low performance, low engaged people, according to Civitas. And I've made that to be applicable to all of them. And I used it during this. this. So, did that. You'll, it'll never show up in your inbox for whatever reason. But I waited till Kingdom Come, never showed up. I went to my sent folder, found the message. So, go to your sent folder. You'll find that icon right there. That's your message. Don't open it up because then it turns it into an HTML page and it wants to save the whole web page. But if you just right click and save as, you can save it as an MP4 file to your desktop, which you can then jump over into Civitas. You'll pick the people, the students that you want to reach out to. Um, you can copy their student advisor on it, and which will then you know, also copy them on the video. And then I usually say something, you know, like, you know, hey, student first name, please see my attached video and let me know how I can assist. And I mean, I've gotten great responses. They get, they get right back to me. They tell me that they love that feedback. It loops in their advisor. It really puts your name out there too with other people, like with the advisors as well. And um, so that's what I do in order to be able to, you know, leverage um, that, uh, that function, that functionality of, of video within Civitas as well. So I want to give you an example of this is a week five low grade, low engagement students. Again, this could go out to like 30 students, but because that Civitas letter is individualized with their, pers their first name, I don't feel like I'm losing something and, and, and becoming too generalized, you know, too copy pasty 
um, because you know, with by not saying their first name here in the video. Let's see if I can get this to work. whatever works best for you, but uh, know that I'm here, and uh, if I miss it, I'll get right back to you. You can send me drafts of your final essay if you have it via email, and I'll get right back to you with some feedback on those. Um, you don't have to rely solely on my weekly draft feedback for that final essay. And in terms of any past work that you might have, you know, that you just haven't completed yet, maybe you've given up on, if you've got zeros for anything in there, you know, I'm willing to accept that work if you want to submit it, just turn it so you know, I just reach out to them and let them know like, hey, it's not too late. Um, and that's, that's a sample video that I would then, then send through Civitas. So moving forward then, here is just some of the qualitative data from different intercourse surveys from the past eight courses that I've taught since January. The instructor's video responses were much appreciated change of pace. They set a very different positive tone for the course. I'd like to see other instructors do this. I love that his responses were in video form. It made it feel like you were actually physically in a classroom. When I needed help on an assignment, he sent me a video and explained what I needed to do very clearly. My teacher was very helpful. I love how he responded in a video instead of just writing out a response. I like the fact that he leaves us a video clip of what he thought about our discussion. I wish all instructors did that because it gives that personal touch and shows how much they really care. For me, that's validation of that framework that I'm using to pursue that pedagogical framework. So it's just great to hear. And then probably my personal favorite, great course and Professor Leverin's, well, not just for that first line, but really it's like, I like where what I highlighted. He was the first professor I had to give video feedback to the class on our post, which made me feel like I was actually being taught. And that kind of gave me pause the first time I read it because it sort of seems to imply almost that whatever came before, you know, was no doubt educational. It was educational, but almost like a like not quite the real thing, you know, like new Coke or something. It was like actually being taught that, that really profoundly moved me when I read that. And I, I, I thought like, wow, okay. All right. I'm onto something. So um, just some things about uh, that, that. That's just, that's a sample, a small sample of the, the numerous responses where people say they like this. And then here is some very rough data. And by that, I mean, it's not like, you know, publishable by any means. Um, I just, I averaged out the um, uh, strongly agree for all sections component for each of the A courses. I, I, I got an average for each of those, and then I balanced them against the average that I had uh, for all Ashford University courses that we get in our end of course surveys. And what I found here was that on average, um, and then again, not allowing for any deviation or anything like that, I know my statistics well enough to know this wouldn't stand up in a court of law. But nonetheless, you can see some promising exploratory data that shows an average of almost 10 points higher in the strongly agrees in all categories for my end of course surveys versus all other Ashford University courses. And to me, that was um, some good preliminary uh, quantitative data pointing towards, you know, what I felt was really an overall success with all this. So um, that's my spiel. And uh, I hope that you guys, uh, that everyone will, um, maybe take a chance and do some um, exploring with this great function. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you, Matthew. I've been monitoring the uh, chat box and uh, a lot of the comments actually relate to time management and uh, a lot of concerns about how, uh, how much time this would add to uh, the teaching week. Uh, you know, that's a very practical uh, concern to have and we understand that. And I would just say that at first, it does take some time to kind of uh, adjust to using the, the technology. And, uh, you know, if, if you have camera fears like myself, uh, I'm very self-conscious in front of the camera. So I'm recording it and, you know, I'm thinking ahead of what I'm saying and so on and so forth. So I'm likely to stutter or get tongue tied. And, um, you know, my tendency would be to stop and re-record. But Matthew mentioned this yesterday in a workshop you kind of have to soldier through it. And uh, I think that the more mistakes you make, not, not too many, but uh, if you make one or two, then that's probably just humanizing you all the more to the student and uh, the students say, well, you know, hey, I would probably uh, start at two in front of the camera, no big deal. I'm more concerned about getting that feedback and in the process, you're communicating empathy and humor and you're really, you're becoming an individual in the uh, student's eyes. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, when the when the baby squeaks or the dog barks at the post person, um, it, it removes that barrier, that that double barrier, really, because you got to overcome. I think uh, we instructors have to overcome not only that um, perception that is often exists in higher education of of instructors in their ivory towers, uh, these the, the banking system, as Frere described it, where we dispense the knowledge to these, you know, people waiting. But we also have to overcome that gap, that literal physical gap, and. Uh, I, I think that the more real that we are, um, the, the, the more effective that is. Um, I remember um, Gabe, who's in here in, uh, in the meeting today. Hey, Gabe. You mentioned uh, a, a long time ago in a meeting about how when you started out doing this, you strove for like the perfect video of feedback until um, you, know, you had a conversation and were like, you know, this is you should just be yourself. And I that really resonated with me. And that uh, made me do that, too, because I started out similarly. I, I, I wore ties. I wanted to make sure that the background was immaculate. And if I deviated from my script at any point, I needed to stop. But that became so time intensive and then ultimately felt less authentic. So I, uh, I'm just me. <laughs> It, uh, time wise, though, to speak to that a little bit, uh, you know, I, for me, I do. I try to do a video a day, and if you keep, you know, if you keep your feedback to about three minutes at you know, most per video in a discussion forum, for example. I mean, it, it all depends on how you utilize the video feedback. Um, so initially, for example, in that first week, it's a little intense for me because I strive to respond to every student in the introduction with the video feedback. And, you know, I, I won't lie, sometimes at the beginning of the week, those, those uh, introductions are three, four minutes long if I'm sitting there in the morning having a cup of coffee, but then towards the end of the week, they're like a minute and 30 seconds. But <laughs> As long as I'm making that connection, I, I haven't heard anybody complain. Um, but uh, really, I guess balancing balancing the load a little bit has helped me. There have been times when I've been under the gun and had to crank them out, and it's not fun. So for me, it's all about striking a balance and resisting my natural um, procrastinational tendencies. Right. And you don't have to um, give video feedback for every single discussion prompt every single week. You just target those ones that are specifically problematic and um, – for me, I, I gave video feedback in that 318 class before, and uh, I just picked two particular weeks to do that in because I only have so much time. And uh, those two weeks, though, I think they, they were uh, strategically uh, chosen by me, and I think that those were the two that were most helpful, and doing any more feedback than that probably would have been overkill, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but the matter, uh, I think that the secret, the best tip that I have found most effective for my own pedagogy is just to uh, give a limited amount of video feedback, uh, make it work as best as you can, but pick the best places to give it. So weeks two and four for me, those are the best ones to give that video feedback because, you know, uh, they were very important assignments that link to the summative assignment too. Um, you're not only helping them with the discussion board work, you're helping them, uh, again, achieve those weekly learning outcomes so that they are going to do better with the summative assignment, too. So, um, you guys say, um, Lynn Trevison asked the question, are your vis videos closed caption or do you share a transcript? I just want to say that when you're uh, speaking to an individual like this, you're not, you don't have to... Uh, worry about a transcript or that uh, unless you know that you have a, a student who's not able to interact with your format. Is that correct then, Michael? That's what we tell people. That's what I've heard, you know, and also uh, another way to circumvent that accessibility issue would be to provide some in-text feedback, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Michael Cooper and Matthew Leverance. Uh, this one's close to my heart. Thanks for all of you joining in this session today. Several people filtered in as time went on. Please enjoy the rest of TLC and contact uh, these two people for any more ideas uh, on their craft. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.